That's because you just got more merchandise. What's up everyone? Today I wanted to talk about the upcoming game merchandise called Totaku. Being dubbed the line as Sony's take on a Nintendo Amiibos, there are currently six figures planned in the initial lineup for March 23rd in the US and March 26th in Australia. Most of PlayStation's exclusives such as Sackboy from the Little Big Planet franchise and Phaser Vehicle from the Wipeout series. Heihachi from Tekken is also part of the first seat, which although typically associated with Sony, is actually a multi-platform franchise, as is Crash Bandicoot is currently owned by Activision. They did go with Crash's classic design though, originating from his PS1 games, as opposed to the future redesigns making a more compelling figure than that found in his Skylanders iteration. There is some more PlayStation classic love with the Parappa the Rapper getting his own figure, done in the flat paper style of that game, making it one of the more unique designs in the set. Very modern games are also being included, with Bloodborne's Hunter character closing out the March lineup. Also, to coincide with the now-determined God of War PS4 release date, there will also be a Kratos figure coming out the 20th of April, and also one featuring his son to be announced at a later date. On face value, I can definitely see why people are calling him Sony Amiibo, but at the same time, there's a multitude of reasons why it's actually different. And honestly, that's a good thing. The easiest comparison is the size, cost, and packaging. At roughly 10cm height per figure and costing $10 US or $20 down under, they match parity with Nintendo figures. The packaging is also very familiar to Amiibo collectors, with the colourful backdrop and artwork features for the game with an open window display so collectors can get a full glimpse of the figure without having to unbox it. The thing is, other than that, and the fact that they're accurate game models, they aren't really much like Amiibos at all. The Totaku figures are just that, figures, no NFC chip for game integration or codes for DLC content for the PlayStation console. For some people, this could be a bit of a disappointment, with less incentive or reward for purchasing them. However, for collectors such as myself, this is a much more preferable option. Nintendo Amiibo started off with small game rewards, such as being able to store a custom Smash AI, but quickly these became a way to lock out exclusive DLC content, such as the classic Link's costumes in the Breath of the Wild, or even entire difficulties in Metroid Samus Returns. This has indirectly created a toxic environment in which scalpers buy as many as possible of these figures and sell them on the third party market like eBay for profit. From Nintendo's perspective, it all works out, with more figures being sold and larger profit margins persist, by appealing to a bigger demographic than just collectors and Nintendo fans, but in turn this is building a DLC marketplace that has no fixed control on how much a piece of content is worth. With Tataku's cutting out all this bullshit, it will just come down to people who wish to own their figures, not for what they could potentially do to future games. In the long run, I think this will be a lot better for customers who wish to obtain these items, and it won't require them pre-ordering items weeks if not months ahead of time to secure one. Also, as it currently stands, Nintendo seems to be the exception, not the rule for the granting of digital goods, likely due to its lack of directly implementing a Toys to Life service like its competitors did. LEGO Dimensions, Skylanders, and Disney Infinity all currently cease to create figures due to the profit margins not being large enough to justify their existence. With a company like Disney not being able to thrive in the market, with some of the biggest IPs in the world under its umbrella, it's just too risky of a marketplace to put any real development costs in. With just a collector angle though, it is a more readily definable metric, and the cheaper collectible companies just seem to grow and obtain even more licenses. Now I'm not a huge fan of the Funko Pop design, but I love the fact that they make so many figures from so many varying licenses that otherwise would never receive much merchandise, that grants fans a tangible item to obtain. For the most part, I like collectibles that match the original design specs for the character, and is the reason I like the Amiibo figures as much as I do. That, and the fact they continue to improve on the figure's quality and design, sometimes releasing Amiibos for smaller and even non-Nintendo games. This is one of the main reasons I'm excited for the Totaku collection, because it allows games merchandise to be created for an affordable price and easy to manage size that accurately represents that character. From the first figure shown, I'm happy with most of their designs, provided the commercial release hit the prototype's level of quality. This series will be a great way to represent non-Nintendo franchises at an affordable level, as opposed to their much, much more expensive collector statues. I would love to see riskier characters that just aren't big enough to justify the existence of a full-fledged statue, like Abe from Oddworld for instance. The other important thing to note is Totaku isn't being made by Sony, but rather ThinkGeek, so the infrastructure for gaming merchandise is already present, greatly reducing the overhead associated with such an undertaking. It does mean, however, that figures can only be created provided the owner grants its license, but it means this collection isn't just restricted to PlayStation. Already Game Spain has tweeted out that Sea of Thieves figures will be coming, as well as many other multi-platform games. This in turn creates a much larger pool than what Amiibos can explore, with characters from a vast variety of titles such as Witcher, Halo, and even Half-Life all being possible. As long as it's not Nintendo, then it potentially could exist. Personally, I think this series is going to be successful, with many exciting avenues for it to explore. I mean, Tataku isn't a great name, but neither was Amiibo, and that caught on, so I suspect that this will likely just change with time. So as you can see, I love this idea, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and check out our other videos for more gaming and geeky content. As always, thank you so much for watching. It's been Russell here, and we hope to see you again soon. 
Oh, shit. 